Hey there, it's Benjamin. In today's video, I'm going to discuss seller financing, what it is and when it's used, and why it may be an option to consider for your next real estate transaction. Let's get started. With seller financing, the seller of the home acts as the lender, agreeing to provide funds to the buyer for the amount required in the real estate transaction. This functions essentially the same as a traditional loan with a promissory note and a security instrument, a deed of trust, and is recorded with the county. In this video, I am focusing on seller carryback financing, which is the extension of credit by the seller who carries a note for either a portion of or the entire amount of the property's purchase price. This is what is meant when the seller carries paper or when you hear the term owner will carry. This means that the seller agrees to carry back a portion of the purchase price and the buyer promises to pay that amount back over a specified period of time. I'm going to demonstrate a couple of examples of seller carryback financing. Here's an example of seller carryback financing on a first loan. Homebuyer Brian makes an offer on a house owned by Henry, who accepts Brian's offer of $500,000. Brian is currently unable to obtain a conventional loan because of differences in his income from year to year. Brian has saved up some money in addition to what he has saved for a down payment. Due to changes in Brian's industry, his income has fluctuated. Homeowner Henry owns his home free and clear with no existing loans. The owner Henry, who sees that Brian has adequate reserves, offers carryback financing on a first loan for $425,000 if Brian can put down a down payment of $75,000. The two agree and the transaction closes at a purchase price of $500,000. Here's an example of a seller carrying back a second loan. Bobby is a prospective buyer who wants to make an offer on a house owned by Oscar. However, Bobby is unable to qualify for conventional financing for the total purchase price of $500,000. Oscar, the owner, has no existing loans on his property. Bobby has a total of $40,000 that he is willing to put as a down payment. Bobby qualifies with a lender for a first loan of $400,000. Between Bobby's down payment and the loan amount he qualifies for up to $400,000, Bobby is still short of the $500,000 sales price by $60,000. Because there is a difference between the purchase price that Bobby is approved for and what the market value of the home is, Bobby asked the seller if he would be willing to carry back a second loan for $60,000, making up the difference. The seller agrees to carry a second loan for $60,000. Bobby secures his first loan from his lender and the second loan from the seller to be able to acquire the property at the $500,000 purchase price. Now that I've provided a couple of examples of seller carryback financing, let's discuss why a buyer would consider it. Let's look at some of the buyer benefits. Number one, the buyer is able to obtain financing that he otherwise may not be able to. Number two, Faster closing of escrow because the buyer may not have to wait for funds to close as is the case with a traditional lender. Number three, the buyer has the opportunity to buy a property that he may not have been able to going with a conventional uh, mortgage or a traditional lender. Number four, seller financing can be a lifeline to buyers during times when money is tight or lending guidelines are strict. Now let's look at why a seller would consider carrying back either a first or a second loan. Number one, the seller has potential to earn a greater return on their money than other investing strategies. Number two, the seller can obtain a higher sales price for the home because the seller is offering the financing to the buyer and providing the opportunity for the buyer to purchase the home that the buyer may not have otherwise had. The buyer agrees to the higher purchase price because the seller is willing to assist them in the financing of the home. It is important to note that a sale involving seller financing may not qualify as an arm's length transaction because of an increased purchase price via the seller financing. What this does is this can affect the comparable properties used when valuating a property by both appraisers and other real estate agents performing a CMA. A seller finance transaction should be taken into account if the property is being used 
as a sales comp. Number three, the seller pays less in taxes over a longer period of time with the installment method and the seller could potentially defer a portion of the capital gains that were financed as part of the carryback. Number four, the seller acts like a bank, holding the note and collecting payments. If at any time the buyer stops making monthly payments, the seller has the opportunity to legally foreclose and take the property back. Lastly, number five, offering seller financing may attract a wider range of potential buyers, especially in a buyer's market or in a down market. Now let's go over some of the disadvantages to seller carryback financing. Number one, the buyer should be prepared to refinance after a certain period of time. Seller carryback terms can be shorter in nature and some have a balloon payment at the maturity date. If the buyer is unable to refinance in time before the balloon payment is due, the seller can legally foreclose on the property if the buyer defaults. Number two, recent restrictions may make it more difficult for a seller to offer carryback financing. Under the Dodd-Frank Act, any person who offers or negotiates the terms of a mortgage loan for either direct or indirect gain may have to be licensed to originate that loan. Certain exceptions apply, so be sure to check that seller financing is able to be performed. Connect with your real estate broker or other licensed professional to seek advice before engaging in seller financing. So how long are the terms of seller carryback financing? The promissory note may be written as a straight note with interest only payments, an installment note with a balloon payment at the end, or a fully amortizing note with equal payments until the note is paid off. Because the terms of seller financing can be shorter in nature, the buyer should prepare for a future refinance with a more traditional lending source. A note can be structured any way the parties choose. Regular monthly payments of both principal and interest, interest only, or bulk payment in a year, a two, or three years payment after certain events happen, etc. There's a number of ways to structure seller carryback financing. So what can the seller do after they've offered financing to the home buyer via a carryback? Well, there's a couple of different options. Number one, they hold on to the note and collect payments from the buyer. Number two, the seller could sell the note to an investor, a private investor, or even a mortgage broker, allowing the seller to cash out on their investment. The seller can sell both the promissory note and the security instrument to an investor at a discount. This is done because it's a way for the seller to cash out their investment and it's called discounting. Other types of seller financing exists, including what's called a contract for deed and an all-inclusive trust deed, abbreviated AITD. This video focused on seller carryback financing. If using state forms to transact the transfer of property, a seller financing addendum and disclosure will be added to the residential purchase agreement. I hope this video is educational and I hope it was insightful. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me directly or you can leave a comment below. Until next time, I'm Benjamin.